Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. As a reminder, we have more resources available other than our flagship book, Gapology. Our learnings from working with leaders on their businesses, exploring their performance gaps, and all the various situations they find themselves experiencing have inspired several follow-up books. We have Imbar, The Pathway of Transformation. We have Speed of Purpose, which happens to be the subject of tonight's show. And two books focus on providing weekly lessons titled Gapology Inspirations. We have Volume 1 and Volume 2. We also have a workbook available for you to enhance your experience when reading the original Gapology. Links to all of these career impacting tools can be found on our website, gapology.org. And as for tonight, we'll wrap up our origin story series by sharing a little bit about Speed of Purpose and how it all started and became an important part of our curriculum. So let's go ahead and get the show rolling with Mark Tinas. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Good, Brian. How are you? I'm good. Man, I feel like I just left you. So strange. We were together last week for uh, the listeners. We were actually uh, teaching a Gapology workshop last week. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It, the group was incredibly engaged and knowledgeable, high energy, and uh, it, it felt great, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I would say they were more engaged than pretty much any other group straight out of the gate. You know, usually there's some people that don't really know the terms and, you know, the book and all that intermixed with some people who kind of do. But this group was so amazing. They were already connected with it, already pretty advanced, I'd say. It was pretty amazing. They probably could have done the workshop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe we should have them teach it back to us. That would have been in- interesting. And their leader is just so fantastic. And, you know, some of the people that uh, really brought Gapology to the group, um, incredibly connected to it. Um, in fact, I th- I'd love to get them on the show. What do you think? Yeah, we should do it. It's great to see the impact Gapology can have on people, mm-hmm. on their right. careers, on their results, uh, on their mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It'll definitely be cool to see the results down the road, the impact, uh, you know, of the session and, and, uh, just the interaction of the group and all the collaboration in the room and, and all of their commitments that they were making at the end of the session. Um, you know, I think down the road, it'll be really neat to see, you know, how they've moved the needle. Yep. And it'll move. <clears throat> absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, that was, so, you know, I was thinking about this, um, you and I really haven't taught together these workshops for a long time. I think maybe, I don't know, three or four times ever that we've been in the same room teaching together. Yeah, we tend to do it separately nowadays, of course, separated by California versus Kansas. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. great to be together. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, uh, let's uh, take a look at our topic tonight. So, you know, we started this origins series by looking at Gapology and where it came from and um, a little bit of an overview of that. And then last week we did Imbar and gave an overview of where that came from and, and what that's all about. And then so tonight I thought we'd wrap up this origins series by looking at Speed of Purpose which uh, was our third book. And, you know, we haven't really taught it a whole lot, um, but we've we've talked about it on the show a few times. Um, But I think it would be good to give everybody an overview of what Speed of Purpose is and then talk a little bit about where it came from. So so what do you think, Mark? Yeah, so Speed of Purpose was really an evolution from our Gapology research. So... In our Gapology research and specifically documenting what the winning leaders were doing, the A group, we called them, um, and that's where we found Gapology, we eventually, as we spread out over other organizations, also saw speed of purpose. So we were able to see and document that organizations with a purpose 
moved faster uh, than those without. And so we started doing the math and calculating it and uh, trying to really understand it. And it was pretty powerful. So Gapology led us to MBAR, which is about how our identity shapes, you know, eventually our results. And that, again, led us to speed of purpose. So it was, they are somewhat in sequence, but they're, they're pretty incredible and they, they stand on their own. And the other thing about speed of purpose, for those of you that are Gapology fans, it is also a three by three, the way we designed it. So as Gapology had you know, knowledge, importance, and action, and then three root solutions, speed of purpose has three drivers, and then each of those have three accelerators. Uh, once you know them and connect with them, uh, it, it's a big deal. I really think it's interesting when you look at starting with Gapology is very tactical, and then you take a step back from that a bit, and you look at identity and mindset, how people see themselves and how people think and feel, which drives those behaviors. And then taking another step back from that and seeing how purpose really matters most. Uh, yeah, no, well said. And speed of purpose complements capology. Yeah, yeah. It complements MBAR. So it's not like these are separate things that are standalone and you pick and choose. No, they all they all go uh, together and purpose in and of itself literally closes knowledge and importance gaps and leads to action. So it is another significant tool. A couple of things we found. So we found organizations that thought they had a purpose, but when we started talking to the team, they didn't know it. And let me tell you, if the team doesn't know the purpose, there is no purpose. Yeah, yeah. So don't sure. kid yourselves. Definitely. So you have to connect with a purpose that everyone knows. And you literally, Brian and I love the term of wrapping it around everyone. So you wrap it around every role in the organization so that they know how they are connected to the purpose. And it makes it very meaningful. We found in the organizations that had purpose that there was a significant difference in the pace of the team, in the engagement level, the enthusiasm, and the results. And we started documenting this, and that's where we came up with the 2.8 times. So for any of you that don't know or haven't read the book yet, we, we believe that speed of purpose, organizations with purpose, can move at a rate of 2.8 times those without. So think about that in your own business. How would that how would that impact results? And, and the reason is purpose creates an emotional connection and it creates a reason to come to work, a connection with your work. It, it's a reason for being and uh, it, it changes the relationship of the team to the work. And uh, the 2.8 times is very real. We found groups that were faster than that. But our math would say you can you can get to two point eight times. So if speed matters in what you do, uh, <laughs> speed of yeah. purpose is for you, <laughs> right? Yeah, if you're trying to lead a team through a change initiative, for instance, you know, leaning into the purpose, creating that purpose, keeping it simple. Um, I think that's a key piece there. Uh, make sure your purpose is very simple so people can quickly learn it and remember it. That's that's a big piece. Yeah. Yeah. And it becomes part of the culture. It becomes part of what you talk about every day. And again, we're, we're going to go through the drivers and the accelerators. So again, a three by three. So you'll see how it, how it uh, amplifies and how it's created. But it, um, when, when purpose is part of your, your daily life, when you get out of bed to go somewhere and do something because of the purpose your purpose, the purpose of the organization, et cetera. It is uh, absolutely a game changer and it, it creates, uh, it creates speed. So. Yep. The uh, three by three is interesting. So for those of you who understand the gapology model with the three gaps and the three root solutions under each gap, uh, we lay out speed of purpose the same exact way. So it's 
you know, three drivers going across and then underneath each driver is three accelerators. And we played with uh, different designs and that kind of thing, but, but it really made sense to lay it out the same way as Gapology. And it, it helps to remember it uh, that way, just because of how it's structured. And we knew that Gapology really connected with people yeah. and they understood it and they were able to teach it to their team. Mm-hmm. And so as we started laying out speed of purpose, ironically, we didn't think about three by three initially. No, not but at all. It, it it really came together as that. And so we we just structured it the same and it uh it, it really is quite uh quite impactful. Mm-hmm. Can I share the three drivers? Yeah, sure. So we determined that this 2.8 times the speed that um, the organizations that had purpose were achieving were uh, the result of three drivers, and and they are people, performance, and process. And when people, performance, and process are wrapped in purpose, uh, everything accelerates. Yeah, absolutely. The, The key is really starting with people. Any role in the organization is wrapped in purpose. Everyone knows how they contribute to the purpose. Um, that's really a key piece, I think, that everyone is connected to it at the position level. Yeah, and people obviously would be the root of purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be it would be the starting point to bring purpose to life. Would be would be people, whether it's your team whether it's your vendors, whether it's your customers, et cetera, that, that becomes the key. And in every organization where we saw this accelerated speed, uh, they had started with their people. And again, that's very logical. Right. And what, what we did then was determined what the three accelerators were that made that driver people move. When it came to people, we found that the role, the rituals of the team and the leaders, and the rhythm of the team and the leaders brought that one to life. So the, the role thing is incredibly important. So picture designing every role in the organization to be tied to the purpose, to have elements of the purpose to have the purpose of the organization at the foundation of the role. That's incredible when that happens. So everybody is tied to the purpose. I think uh, everyone does need to have it really built into the expectations of that role. Uh, So, you know, right away with the hiring process, the, the onboarding process, I would say yearly appraisals, all of that should be, reflected through how people connect to the actual purpose, how they deliver on that purpose. Yeah. So ideally an organization would lay out by role, the behaviors that equal the purpose. Yep. And that just brings it, you know, makes it so Mm -hmm. clear, brings it to life. Right. So that, that becomes the first big one. The, The next one then, you know, which wouldn't have been as logical if you were just guessing, is rituals. So we found that the organizations that were really leading with purpose and driving this speed had rituals, which brought the purpose to life. We were at one organization where they, throughout the day, did standing ovations. And the standing ovations were about delivering the purpose. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Wow. And that motivated everybody. You know, wouldn't you love to be standing at the center of a standing ovation about how you delivered the purpose? So the rituals, we, we always say we are what we celebrate. If any of you haven't heard us say that, but this is sort of part of that. What, what rituals do you have around the purpose? Part of it's celebration. Part of it is just things you do that bring the purpose to life daily. We uh, know of an organization that asks the team every week, okay, tell us what you did this week to deliver the purpose in front of their peers. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that every week they're going to talk about that. So throughout the week, they 
you know, look to deliver the purpose. Total game changer, but it's a ritual. It's significant. It's meaningful. People come to that meeting to speak about it. You know, they love that. Yeah. You know, oftentimes we get uh, questions around culture. Uh, when we're teaching gapology, culture is one of our root solutions under the action gap. And and people oftentimes ask, you know, how do you create culture and rituals? That That's really part of it. So, you know, how you celebrate, how you recognize people, those are some of the things that really create the culture. And if you do it with purpose, where that those celebrations, those rituals of celebration are connected to your purpose, it's far more meaningful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And often it's visible to... When you do it right, it's visible to even your customers. You know, they see it and become part of it and appreciate it and and feel good about it. Sure. Um, right. Depending on who you're, you know, what business you're in, what organization you're part of. So the third accelerator is rhythm. And we talked a lot about rhythm in capology, but the rhythm of the leader can really bring purpose to life and make it real. So how they behave, how they structure their week, their month, et cetera, that leadership rhythm can reinforce the purpose to where it's very real. It's felt by everyone, very meaningful. You as leaders matter. What you do matter. What you talk about matters. Uh, How you structure your week and what you focus on matters. So when it's about the purpose, everyone sees it and they tend to buy in and move faster, by the way. Yeah. I think this is one of those areas in which leaders would be uh, showing the way. You know, if you build a leadership rhythm that really demonstrates the purpose, demonstrates what you're expecting around purpose Um, You're really showing the way. It's not just talk. It's just not, you know, words written on a, you know, piece of paper hanging on the wall. Uh, By demonstrating it, it shows that you understand it, believe in it, and expect it from your team as well. Yeah, well well said. So that's the first driver, people. And uh, it's all about the role, the rituals, and the rhythm. Uh, The second driver uh, that we uncovered really is performance. And it's all about setting clear expectations, uh, understanding the execution that needs to happen to deliver the purpose, and then having a uh, definition of excellence and what that looks like. So those are the three accelerators of the driver of performance. Yeah, no, I think uh, under performance, the you know, setting clear expectations that equal achieving the purpose. I think that's critical. You know, people have to understand, you know, what's expected of them. And one of those things really needs to be that purpose, delivering it, right? Um, as far as the execution, you know, modeling and template the the key execution points that equal the purpose. So really diving in on those execution points, those things that actually will deliver the purpose when executed. I mean, this is all human behavior stuff. And then the last thing is defining and teaching excellence in achievement of the purpose. So defining it is is one thing. I think the key there, though, is teaching it. And we always say leaders need to be teachers. That's really the key piece there is that you're not just setting excellence as the expectation for the group, but you're really teaching how to get there. Yeah, a couple of things for those of you that are that are taking notes. When you look at the expectations accelerator. It was all about having the metrics defined that equal the purpose. What are the metrics Mm -hmm. that equal the purpose? That's what the expectations were. The execution was what are the behaviors that drive those metrics? So when those two are connected, you're well on your way. And, And it's huge once you've figured that part out. And, and then excellence is, you know, what, what does great look like in relation to our, in relation to our purpose? And once an organization has defined those three accelerators and spread them throughout the group, speed is the outcome. They move quicker. They don't stroll over to the customer. They run. <laughs> right. I mean, just, you know, in the simplest of terms, Yeah. if you were in a retail store, um, 
it drives up profit it saves on payroll it uh it's motivating it's it's it creates tenure uh something we were so impressed with last week with the group we were with uh in the gapology workshop is their their tenure by a team member was the highest we've ever seen i believe and you know it's it it's all about this so again those accelerators uh really really matter here and they are setting clear expectations knowing the execution pieces uh the behaviors you're looking for and then uh defining excellence for your team so that everybody's clear on that right absolutely and when you think of teams that are not wrapped in purpose i think it's good to contrast this sometimes uh, you know, those teams are not in a hurry to rush over to the customer, for instance. Um, you know, they're just not the ones that are engaged. Um, productivity drops, tenure certainly drops. You can see that type of a culture, that environment uh, very quickly as you walk into different, you know, it could be restaurants, it could be retail, it could be whatever business. You can see it, you can feel it if they're not connected to your purpose. So, so if you want to get things moving, find what matters most and connect your team with that. Yeah. And in a, in a gapology context, it's really about this gaping hole in the importance gap. If you don't have. <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah. I, why I am literally I doing this? wrote importance in huge letters on my paper here. That's exactly why right. am I doing this? Yeah. Why does it matter? Totally. When have I got to do it? You know, it's so it's it's a big deal there. And again, that's that all leads knowledge, importance and leads to the action that you're looking for. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So those th- those are big. So when you lead with people and then you drive performance, you're well on your way. The third one that we found that we probably wouldn't have thought of as easily was process. So process was a third driver. What if your organization looked at every process through the lens of the purpose? Think about that for a minute. What if they looked at everything through that lens and the processes of the organization aligned with the purpose? So the accelerators, uh, there are structure, interesting, systems, and simplicity. So you can't have a great organization where one of those three doesn't represent your purpose is out of alignment. It creates this huge disconnect. So structure could begin with even org structure. Have you designed an org structure that drives the purpose? Huh? What if that became the initial objective? Think about that. I don't think it's normally talked about in most organizations, you know, are, mm-hmm. are we, are we structured to achieve our purpose? Have we structured the team? Have we designed it with the correct leadership structure, et cetera, to achieve the purpose? And when you start putting everything, and I love that, uh, through the lens of purpose, write that down, Brian. Yeah. That could be a t-shirt even. <laughs> yeah. I've got it. Wow. Yeah, through the lens of purpose. What, what if everything was through the lens of purpose? Mm-hmm. So again, when the structure is there, then to begin thinking about the systems. What if you have a system that your customers interact with that doesn't make sense, uh, is awkward, certainly doesn't reflect our purpose? That can derail the whole thing. So you have to think about it. And the IT department, as well as leadership and everyone else have to be aligned with the with the purpose. Think about that. What if you haven't aligned certain departments with the purpose? You're not going to achieve speed. Right. So you have to think about that. So again, lens of purpose uh, really, really matters there. It, it gets simpler from there. Simplicity is something we found was a core value, I guess, in organizations that had a strong purpose. And if you think about it, it makes everything move faster as well. So simplicity is part of the foundation of speed. Mm -hmm. When you make things simple, as simple as you can for the team, for the customer, whoever whoever 
uh, the organization is built around, it changes everything. So sorry, I gave you too much there, but I'll let you comment. Yeah, no, no, that's good. So uh, the one thing that stood out to me there, and it's something that I wrote down in my notes as I was putting my, my notes together here, is uh, when you have complexity, it clouds purpose. You wrote that in the book, by the way. Complexity uh, clouds that purpose. That, that could be a t-shirt right there. Yeah, yeah, that should be one for sure. Complexity clouds purpose. So, So when you are going after something, and there's so much complexity that's built around that people cannot see it. They can't see purpose. It clouds it. It gets in the way. It prevents people from achieving it because it's just too much. There's too much uh, stuff that they have to try to fight through to be able to get to the purpose. And complexity would slow things down. Uh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the name of the book is Speed of Purpose. Right. Right. So purpose creates speed. Complexity uh, would slow things down. So the simplicity piece here is is huge. So uh, again, we found the organizations that were moving faster had figured out simplicity for the team, for the customer, for everyone. So it, it all came together for us. Uh, someday we'll be very well known for a book called Speed of Purpose. We haven't told a lot of people about it or, or done a lot with it because Gapology uh, has tended to take up most of our time and mind share, fair to say, Brian? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. But the sequence of Gapology leading us to Embar, how identity you know, impacts results, uh, more, there's more to it than that, but that's sort of the s simplest form of it. And then speed of purpose which again uses a three by three uh, process of drivers and accelerators and shows you how to achieve speed in your organization mm -hmm. uh, came third. And we, we learned it. We didn't invent it. We discovered it again, as, as we say, and uh, uh, it was, it was present in the organizations we started teaching Gapology in and likely Brian over, over our careers, we've learned more from other people than we've taught. Oh yeah, hundred percent, definitely. Yeah, so yeah, no question. Yeah, so yeah, so I'd, I'd like to read, if you don't mind, the opening words from the book. Uh, there's three short little paragraphs. I, I want to read this, and then I want to get your thoughts on legacy, because um, the legacy of a leader is important. I think oftentimes, you know, as people grow through their career, they start to begin to think about their legacy, what they're going to leave behind, uh, how they're going to impact things. So. Um, so wait a minute, this. wait a minute. You're going to read words that I wrote? Yes. Oh, yes. All wow. Right. So, so, so let buckle me, up um, here. This is, let me this sit is, back. This here. is going to be good. This is going to be good. Uh, so we were created to have purpose in our lives. When we have purpose, everything changes. Purpose becomes our reason for being. And with purpose, we can achieve our ultimate potential and be truly fulfilled. Great leaders provide real purpose to their organizations. Purpose within an organization gives meaning to people because it gives meaning to their hard work. I love that, Mark. That's wow, beautiful. Wow. I'd like to meet the guy that wrote that. <laughs> Just look in that mirror that we always talk about. Yeah. No, that, yeah. That's, that sums it up. Yeah. And it, it's a big deal. Some organizations have gotten there, and many have not. Uh, many have an obscure mission that the team doesn't really know. That ain't purpose. Mm -hmm. That ain't it. So look in the mirror, leaders. Reevaluate where you at here, and uh, you can achieve the speed of purpose. Yep, absolutely. And, and when you're looking at legacy, looking at how you want to leave your mark on the world, purpose is a great way to do it. Uh, you know, what creates your legacy is really the lives that you impact. That's another thing you wrote, Mark. Another t-shirt. I need more t-shirts. I've got like empty hangers in the <laughs> closet now. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. I'll have to have Julianne order you some. Let's get it done. All right. Get you stocked up. Okay. Well, that's a good place to leave this. Thanks, Brian. Well yep. done. Yep. Nice job. We'll talk to you later. Have a good week. All right. See ya.
All right, that'll do it from here. For more information on Gapology, Imbar, or Speed of Purpose, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. Talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.